I'm Lori. I'm David. And this is Mermaid and Jedi Adventures. This month on Mermaid and Jedi Adventures is Food Month. Mm -hmm. Food Month. Everybody needs to eat, so we're going to be suggesting where to stay, where to eat on property, where to eat off property, and uh, if it's worth it to getting the dining plan. So today we're going to be talking about the dining plan. So if you don't know, the dining plan is a prepaid option that you can do when you are a Disney Resort guest. Um, you either to be, need to be a Disney Resort guest um, who's booked a Magic Your Way package, or you need to be a Disney Vacation Club member, um, so you're able to book a prepaid meal plan for the length of your stay. Yeah. Now there's three types of dining plans. There's the uh, quick service dining plan, which will include two quick counter service uh, meals, one snack, and a refillable mug. So the dining plan for adults is forty-four thirteen for the quick service per night, and for the ch uh, children it is nineteen oh four per night. And the refillable mug is this guy here that yeah. can only be used. You, it's basically a refillable drink at resorts. You can't use it at the parks. So if you were to purchase that separately, it's about $18, uh, but it is included in the dining, all of the different types of dining plans. Okay, so that's a quick service. The next uh, option is the plus dining, which includes one table service, one quick service, one snack, and refillable book. Merlin literally loves the table service. Yeah. So uh, for this plan, it is $63.70 per night for an adult. And $22.85 for children. So when we're talking about a meal, like either a quick service or a table service meal, uh, each meal includes one drink, one entree, and one dessert. So you get all of those options with, with each meal that you have. Yep, and there's also the deluxe dining package, which is more for people who are... Foodies. Foodies, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that includes three meals, uh, table or quick service. Yeah. You, get to, you, get, you get to choose on that one. Two snacks and one refillable mug. Uh, so you can choose any combination of quick service or sit down meals with those. Yeah, that one's a little bit expensive. That's $115.08 a night for adults. And $34.49 for kids. Yes, and with the meals, since the meals do come with the dessert, if you're not wanting dessert or can't have desserts because of if you're like me and you're diabetic, you have options. You can substitute the dessert for a sugar-free option or you can substitute for a soup or a salad or some other substitutions that the quick service or table service will have. Yeah, you just have to ask wherever you are and let them know of your dietary restrictions and most places are pretty accommodating to provide you with a different option. Uh, so some tips that we have for our um, dining plans are to, one tip that we have is to make reservations. You're able to make reservations when you're staying at the Disney property, uh, staying at a Disney property, you're able to make reservations 180 days 180 days or six months ahead of time and I know that seems a little bit extreme but you're going to need that time if you have any chance of booking some of the reservations. Yeah definitely we had trouble trying to get it to be our guest. Yeah. Um, we were trying to book I think a couple months in advance and everything was booked up and then a slot came up for lunch and we got in luckily. Uh, yeah we ended up getting in for I think it was about two o'clock in the afternoon and I had to find that uh, slot available. I think I booked that slot at like 1.30 in the morning, one morning or something. Yeah. I stayed up late to try and find it. So definitely if you're booking one of the more popular options like Ohana for table service or Le Cellier which is like the deluxe you know sit down uh, steakhouse in the Ca uh, Canadian Pavilion in Epcot or if you're booking Be Our Guest which is a very popular for both lunch and dinner um, you're going to want to make reservations. Just a side note uh, for Be Our Guest is if you have the quick it's a sit down or the um, the table service credits for dinner but it is actually a quick service credits for lunch and I think that's probably one of the reasons why yeah. um, you know it sells out so quickly or the re it's really hard to get a reservation is because you get that sort of sit down experience in the Beast Castle all the ambiance with a quick service credit which is awesome yeah. uh, so um, if you're going to be making reservations you probably want to sort of you know know if the place that you want to go to accepts um, either quick service or counter service or table service credits if, if it accepts the dining plan. So one place to go is you know the usual uh, Walt Disney World website. Um, you can also go to wdwinfo.com or you could also go to touringplans.com. Yep. Uh, links to those websites we uh, below in the description. Another tip to have with the dining plan is to plan ahead. 
So you want to plan ahead with which park you're going to be staying at, or which resort you're going to be staying at. There's, uh, so Sorry, can you just say, plan ahead by which park you're going to be at that day, or which resort you're going to be at that day? Okay, can you uh, say that I, I, I don't know why you need to say up at that day. Because uh, that that's, because then I don't have to ch chime in and say the other stuff. You should have on straight. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know how else is going to work when we uh, put it all together. Okay. Another tip to have with the dining plan is to plan ahead to which resort and park you're going to be staying at during that day. Yep. So we want to plan ahead because if you're, say for example, you're in Adventureland and you're looking for something specific, like you're looking for like a hamburger or hot dog, you don't want to go all the way across the, across the park to get, to get that meal. You can probably look for something nearby. Yeah. Or if you're staying, uh, you know, you decided that you're going to Magic Kingdom that day, and then you realize that you made a reservation at Epcot, then you won't have to leave the park, go all the way to your reservation, and then come back. Yeah. So, basically, if, to look for restaurants in each park, you can look at the uh, Disney World app. There's, that will show you exactly where the correct service and table service is. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have the app, it will also be on the brochures you get yeah. at the parks. It will show you, basically, where the restaurants are in comparison to where you are. Another tip uh, that we have is to stretch out your credits. So with the Walt Disney World um, dining plan, or just the Disney dining plan, because for some reason I keep calling it the Walt Disney World dining plan, um, which I guess is kind of true because they don't really have a dining plan at Disneyland, in the Disneyland hotels. But anyways, <laughs> for the dining plan, to stretch out your credits, the credits are based on your nights per stay. So for example, we're going from October the 1st, Saturday, until October the 8th, Saturday. That's actually eight days, but because we're only there for seven nights, we only get seven nights or days worth of credits. So one of the days that we're going to be there, we're going to be without those meals. So that's fine, because we're probably going to be having, uh, with our quick service uh, dining plan that we, we have uh, purchased, we're going to be wanting to go to Ohana, which will be uh, out of pocket. And then we're also going to be having a shopping afternoon in Orlando or maybe playing some mini golf. So we'll just, you know, buy something um, in the town of Orlando, go to a restaurant off-site at that time. Yep. Another good option to you know, stretch out your credits is if you, to have, like, use one meal meal credit for two people. Mm -hmm. If, if you're, if you're not, both are not that, not that hungry, yeah. you can do that. The, the portions of the adult meals at Disney are, are very generous. Um, you know, a burger is just a burger, fries is just a fry, you know, a thing of fries. But I find if you're getting pasta or you're getting, you know, if you're getting a dessert or if you're trading that in for a soup or a salad, plus your drink, plus your pasta, and you are having a lunch, you know, you could probably split that between two people, especially if you've had a big meal already or you're planning on having a big meal later on that evening. Yeah. Uh, another thing that you could do if you're either wanting to buy something out of pocket um, because you're, you know, saving credits, or if you are not using the dining plan, is for adults to buy kids' meals. Now, I know that that seems a little bit weird. Not really. At Disney World, everybody kind of, kind of has it yeah. feels like a kid inside. So. That's right. But at Disney World, adults buy kids' meals all the time. It's a smaller portion. A lot of times, they also have healthier options for sides. Juice boxes, milk, chocolate milk, um, you know, a bag of mini carrots or apple slices. So you get your little main entree. Uh, for example, when we were in uh, Hollywood Studios, I, we got the chicken and waffles. I got the child size portion. So I got three chicken like nuggets, one little waffle, plus I was able to get um, fries, and I think I got... You got a drink too. I so. got a drink as well, like a little chocolate milk as well. So that was great. So, and that was all for $6. So that's the thing, you know, for, for if you're trying to, you know, save a few bucks as well, a child's um, like menu item or a child's meal, I should say, is usually 5 or $6 versus, let's say, 9 to $11 for an adult uh, size portion. Yeah. Now, if you, at the end of your trip, you find that you have some unused snack, snack credits, yeah. you can uh, basically cash those in for snacks that you can take home with you. So anything that's considered like a single size portion or anything that's like $5 or less, uh, just take a look at what's considered a snack credit. There's, you know, many different lists and you can just ask as well. But things like the uh, Rice Krispie treats or a little box of cookies or, you know, a sucker or something like that, you can bring those things home. So not only did you not waste, you know, your, your credits, but also you have little souvenirs or little gifts for people that you can bring home. Yeah. 
So, you know, basically talking about all of this, is the dining plan worth it? Yeah. Well, uh, to calculate it out, basically, for quick service, that's around $10 and up, and I like, know, well, let's, let's get in the kids' meal. Yeah. So. But, you, I mean, you wouldn't do that if you were on the, yeah. on the plan. So, let, yeah, let's look at a sort of a, a cheaper end quick service meal. $10. Yeah, $10. So you get two of those, so that's twenty. Uh, plus the drink is like you know three dollars, and then the dessert would probably be you know five dollars. Yeah. So that you know then for plus, each meal. Yeah, and plus the taxes yeah. and everything. So the kind and of, your snack. Yeah, it, it it adds up. So it well, it might look expensive to start. When yes. you start adding all the taxes in and all the separate meals, it does uh, make it a good deal to buy it. And also, what's a good thing about the dining plan is it's prepaid. So yeah. you pay for it when you're buying your resort. And then you basically, then you're done. You're like, okay, now I have some extra money for other things, for, for more souvenirs, for more, you souvenirs. know. Souvenirs. <laughs> more souvenirs, more, you know, things you like, you know, so you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. So that's, I think, a really good benefit of that. You can also, um, you know, it helps to pre-plan your meals so the total, you know, you, you sort of pre-plan all your meals out as well. Um, so it kind of, like David was saying with the budgeting, you know, that, that sort of helps pre-plan everything out. Also with the, um, the dining plan, you know, if you are sort of savvy about it, or if you really look at the, what you can get for the price, there are ways of actually, I don't want to say saving money, but you can, there's definitely many different meals that you can order or places that you can go for both quick service and table service. Or the cost of your meal, if you added all those things together, will be far greater than what you actually paid for um, with the dining plan. So yeah. there's ways to, to do that. Yeah, like $10 is probably, I think, on the low end. The uh, very low end. Low end, low end yeah. of meals. Last time we went, we, we didn't have the dining plan and everything was, like, what we bought was around $10. Yeah. But there's a few places that might be a little bit more kind of thing. So yeah. look for that. There is a calendar, like a calculator, sorry, cal calculators online that you can see that will calculate how much the meal would actually be. Yeah. Without uh, the dining plan, uh, so you should see how much savings you can actually get with it. Yeah, if you, for example, you want to, want a really good dining calculator to go to is um, see a real soon. So it's see a real soon dot wix dot com. Uh, Joe has really worked out this program where it's a full spreadsheet, and you you're putting in, you know, how much money you know per day for your meals, and it adding it all up to make sure that the sort of to take a look at. Um, you know, is it worth it for you? Like based on what you think you're going to be eating to get the dining plan. So I guess the last thing for the dining plan, I mean, we always think that it's a great idea for us, but it's definitely an individual thing. And one of the things that you need to take a look at for both what kind of dining plan do you want to get as well as should I get the dining plan in the first place are how much are you planning on eating? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Are you planning on eating full sit-down meals where you want to have counter service? Do you need that deluxe plan? Are you a foodie, like we were saying before, where you want three you know, full meals a day, or do you want the quick service? Um, also, maybe you don't eat want to eat a full meal. Maybe you don't want the, the dessert, the meal, and, you know, and the, the, the drink with each uh, thing. So if you are more of a snacking person, or if you're one of the, you know, maybe you're a person who likes to bring their own food in, the dining plan might not be for you. Yeah, last year we decided, oh, we don't need the dining plan because there were so many places we wanted to eat off property. Yeah. And we kind of, figured, you know, kind of got tired by after being at the park for so long and said, yeah. we didn't want to go out that much. We didn't want to go out. We just wanted to eat at the hotel. And yeah. the resorts have quick service and at the, at the, at the resorts. So yeah. we decided we're just going to get the dining plan and then supplement the dining plan with our trips out. Yeah, absolutely. So we hope that you found this information helpful. Um, like I say, there's benefits to both, you know, not getting the dining plan as well as getting the dining plan. For us, I think in the future, um, just for the ease, you know, the yeah. convenience of sort of prepaying that, sort of budgeting it in, uh, as well as, you know, knowing that we will eat two meals a day, um, that uh, we'll probably be getting it in the future as well. Yeah. So definitely uh, hope this information was helpful. Uh, if you have any comments, please, you know, if you find the dining, um, plan helpful or if you want to let us know which dining plan that you booked before that'd be great uh, please like and, and subscribe also we have an Instagram account uh, we will link that information below and we post pictures several times per week so hopefully you'll uh, stay tuned for every week coming up for April where we're talking about different types of uh, food items and different types of snacks and places we like to go and uh, until then take care take care